Alrighty, in this video we're going to be looking at pin input. It's uh, We have a lot of inputs we've been covering recently, and I think this is the last one of the, the kind, like with input in its name. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the docs, and then we have three examples I believe we're going to look at and do some actual hands-on coding, so let's get to looking at the docs. It says here pin input is a component that's similar to the input component, but is optimized for entering sequences of digits here. And so we can see that we're bringing in two imports. We have pin input and pin input field. The pin import uh, says right here, the component that provides context to all the pin input fields. And then the pin input field itself is the text field that the user types in, must be a direct child of pin input. And so as we come down here, we could see right here that we have HDAC, which doesn't really affect or impact anything. We have pin input. And then we have the pin input field, so we can see that these are all children of the actual pin input. As we come in here and type, we could do, you know, one, 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 and voila, that works. And so we could also allow for alphanumeric characters, so maybe we want to do, you know, one A, one A, and I'm not even hitting tab, I'm just hitting one, and then it's auto-focusing on the next pin input field, which is pretty cool as well. We have this one right here for OTP. So this one allows um, your like computer or OS or whatever to like auto-complete something here. And so I don't think mine does it for this example, but if you were to use this for like your website or logging in or whatever it may be, you could set this OTP prop in here and it's gonna ask your browser to, you know, hey, do you remember this four digit pin or whatever it is you may have in here, maybe five you know, inputs you want. Um, I'm not gonna click it just cause I also, sometimes my computer shows up really weird stuff um, and I don't want, you know, just in case any information of mine personally to pop up here, but you could use that there. And then you could uh, mask the pin's input value. And so you would just throw in mask right here, which is set to true. So if I wanted to do one, 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 we see that we have the four dots in here and it is masking it. If we wanted to make this mask false, if we wanted to toggle, we could do that as well. And I think actually one of my examples goes over that. We could also change size, you know, surprise, surprise. Most things in Shocker, you could change the size of. We have extra small, small, medium, and large here. As we could see, they get quite large on this end of the spectrum here, but even the small, I think to a degree is a respectable size, but um, the smaller medium, I think, is pretty decent to use in most cases, although maybe it's just my eye right here. The small and the extra small are more rectangular, and these ones are I'm obviously so rectangular, but what I'm trying to point out is there's more of a rounded edge on the medium, which I think is kind of interesting stylistically. And so we could add a default value. So we have default 234. So what happens if you had, you know, n number of extra pin input fields. Well, I think uh, I also cover that in one of my videos and when I actually do some hands-on coding, so look out for that. But you could also just auto-load values in here. Oh, look at me already talking about that. Yes, so if you have more pin uh, input fields and there are default values, then it fills them in this way. So I kind of ruined the surprise there. We could also change the placeholders rather than default values. You could just send in emojis or whatever it is you want to. So you could still come in and do one, 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 and it'll still work the same. I don't know what the benefit of this is, but hey, uh, it allows you to do it. So we have disable focus management by default. Pin input moves focus automatically to the next uh, input once a field is filled. It also transfers focus to a previous input when there's delete. To disable this behavior, you could set manage focus to false here. I don't necessarily know why you would do this unless there's some maybe accessibility thing or something unique about a use case, edge case, whatever it may be, but you could do that just by, you know, if I came in here and hit one, it does not move over. I'd have to manually do this myself. So yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. And we could autofill, copy and paste in here. And so try copy and paste one, two, three, four into any of the inputs in the example above by default. You can only change one input at a time, but if one of the input fields receives a longer string, pin input attempts to validate the string and fill in the other input. So I'm not gonna do that right here, um, just because I don't wanna bring up another program, but 
that is quite interesting that it allows you and it tries to intelligently break the string up and just slaps everything in here for you. So we also have a lot of props. These things are always great to look at, focus on. Maybe there's additional things in here that aren't covered by the documentation, like air border color and whatnot. But let's actually just kind of wrap it up here in the docs and let's see a coding example, or in this case, three. So in this first section or the first example we're gonna do, we're just gonna make a simple pen input. And what we're gonna do is give it the type of alphanumeric or really whatever type we want to, we could play around with it. We're gonna give it the argument OTP, which allows the end user to choose whether or not they want to um, have like autofill, which I've already typed this out previously and my computer doesn't need to autofill anything, but it's still important to show. And another attribute that I'm gonna be adding in is mask. And mask allows you to hide the information that the user is typing in, so it's more visually secure. So let's get to go, uh, or let's get to coding. So we have this box here, and I typically have the box in most of these tutorial videos, just to give everything a little bit of padding. I realize the H stack is going to probably take care of that for me, but you don't need the box or the H stack to do pin input. It's just a spacing visual thing for y'all. So if I'm to come in here right now, and I was to type in, you know, let's do, oh, you know what? It doesn't take anything. Why does it not take anything? Because we have to give it a type. So we do number or we do alphanumeric. We're going to stick with alphanumeric. We're going to hit save. And an interesting thing, since you can't see my keyboard, I'm not hitting tab. I click in here and it automatically goes to the next one. And I got to tell you that stuff like that is really, really cool. I know that may be basic or whatever, but it's just the little things like that that I find interesting. Now with the OTP, this will allow, if true, the pin input component signals to its fields that they should be autocomplete equals one time code. So I don't have anything to autocomplete here, but if you want to allow it, that's what we would enter in here. Now we have mask, or not misc, but mask. So as we enter this in, we can see now that everything is a dot here. If I was to come in and make this be false, changes back to beer. So this is a way that you could choose to mask and turn on and off the visibility. You could easily have a button elsewhere where a user clicks it so they can make sure that their, you know, four digit pin or, you know, in this case or whatever it may be, um, is visible before they submit it. So in the next section, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the size, uh, value and default value. And then we could also start doing uh, cool placeholder type things with our uh, pin input as well. So see ya in just a couple seconds. All right, so now that we're back here, what we have is our pin input, cleared out everything but the alphanumeric. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a size. So you can see we can make this a little bit bigger here. We could add a default value and we could also add placeholders too. Now, the default value and placeholder are kind of competitive. So we're gonna have to kind of show one, delete, and then show the other. So we have alphanumeric and let's just toy with the sizes first. So we have extra small which is teeny tiny right here. So if we wanted to go up to say large, we've already seen what large is. So if you wanted to do small, you know, you could play around with those sizes, whatever fits you and the screen that you're putting it on, whatever makes sense. But just so everyone could see easier, I'm gonna keep it on large for the remainder of the tutorial here. So. Another thing that you may want to do is have a default value in here already. For whatever reason that may be, it's up to you, but I'm just going to show you how you can do it. So it says sub right here. Hopefully you all subscribe to my channel. Let me refresh this and we can see that it's still here. In case you think it's some weird kind of cache thing, let me put in dog. And we could see when I refresh it because there's the hot reload doesn't, for some reason, doesn't work that well. We can see that it says dog right here. 
Now, another thing we could do, which is I think kind of funny, is we could actually have a placeholder. And so I'm going to copy and paste this on over because you're going to see why. And we see that each one of these are watches now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so if you come in here and type, you know, um, beer, they're all, you know, the, it's exposed here. Now, if we put mask on, it changes to the dots. But when we have mask on and then the placeholder here, it's almost like uh, there's a default value of nothing. It's just this cartoonish looking watch. But then as we go type, it's masked. Once again, I don't know what you're going to use that for, but I mean, have fun with it. So in the next section, in the last section, what we're going to do is show you how to capture data from this uh, pin input and then do some stuff with it. And uh, yeah, we're going to wrap it up after that. So welcome back a couple seconds later. In this section, in the last section, what we're going to do is we're going to keep our pin input here, but we're going to have a hook. And what we're going to do is we're going to capture the incoming information. And when it hits a certain combination, if you will, we're going to just give an alert to the screen. Now you could use this to, you know, um, enter into a profile, exchange information, make an API call, something like that. But to keep things a bit more simple, uh, just to kind of show you, you know, rely more on the chakra end of it here. I try not to make any of the other logic more complex than it needs to be because I think that's out of scope. So let's go to um, our example here. So now we have this right here. Refresh it to make sure the lukewarm re reload, because it's not necessarily a hot reload, works. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in one, two, three, five, or six in this case, because my finger slipped. Nothing happened. So let me do one, two, three, four. And we see it says you get a pizza. Now this could have easily logged me into a social media site or anything else along those lines. And so this on change here, I'm sending E, which is the just value, the current value. Usually it's like E dot or event dot target dot value. But in this case, it's just E, which is interesting to me. But it's just this is the value coming in. So it's whatever I'm essentially typing. And then it's going to be sent to this function right here, which then every time this reloads, it's checking, hey, does the value equal to one, two, three, four yet. And when it does give this pop-up provided. And so this is just one of the cool things you could do with the pin input and all this other stuff hooked up to it. I can't wait to see what you're doing with it. Um, let me know in the comments down below, like, share, subscribe. If you dig what I'm doing, I love doing it. I'll see y'all in the next video.